Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be comparing my two favorite programming languages, BQN and the brand new stack oriented array language, WeWa. And for this comparison, we're going to be revisiting a problem that I solved in a talk that I uploaded to my YouTube channel just over a year ago entitled APL versus BQN versus J versus Q versus NumPy versus Julia versus R. A little bit of a mouthful. If you haven't seen that talk, it's roughly 40 minutes long. I recommend you go and watch it first. But I will give a quick recap of the problem check matrix so that you can follow along if you already have seen it and you just need a refresher on what that problem was. So the problem is given a matrix return a one or a zero corresponding to true and false as to whether or not this matrix is an X matrix. And an X matrix is defined by the problem to have non-zero values, aka positive numbers, on the diagonals and zeros everywhere else. So according to that kind of algorithm or rubric, if we look at the matrix on the left, on the diagonals, it's all positive numbers, zeros everywhere else, but the right matrix does not follow this. So we return true for our matrix on the left and false for our matrix on the right. If that didn't make sense, like I said, go watch the 40 minute talk that I uploaded over a year ago. And in that talk, I showed solutions at first to APL, BQN, and J. And in this video, we're going to be revisiting the BQN solution and also showing a point free version and then looking at what the solution looks like and building it up in WeWa, which I think is very, very illuminating on why I'm falling in love with this language so quickly. So in that old talk, I did this animation where I got rid of the sort of assignment to a function name. I blew up the font a bit. I kind of tried to use the same formatting and, and color coding for each of them. And then I tried to line them up. This come, becomes difficult though with a stack oriented array language because binary functions or dyadic functions are prefix. But you can kind of see the similarity here if you squint hard enough. Anyways, we're gonna throw away APL and J and just focus on BQN and WeWa. So first things first, let's hop over to BQN pad and solve this again in BQN and then show what the point free version looks like. And then we'll hop over to WeWa pad and solve it there. So here we are in BQN pad. And the first thing we want to do in order to solve this problem, if you recall, is to build up an identity matrix. And the way we're gonna do that is by calling length, passing this to range, and then we're gonna use table with equal and the W combinator, which is called self. So this is table, this is self, and this is the first step to our identity matrix. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse this and then compose this with the monadic before, which corresponds to the sigma combinator, and put this with max. So basically, this is doing a copy of our argument here and reversing it and then taking the maximum of all those values. Pretty fantastic. Now the second thing we need to do is to basically, uh, we're just gonna use concatenation here. We need to, if we put X here for the moment, this is just concatenating our identity matrix with our original matrix. And we want to do a scalar min with one. And that is basically gonna get us the equivalent of an identity matrix if it is a X matrix. And then we just need to replace our catenation with match and we should be good to go. So this is our solution that we initially showed in the talk that we uploaded a year ago. However, you note that this is not point free. And the reason that I kept this as non-point free or non-tacit is because I think it's actually more readable because of the fact that we have effectively this boils down to a unary operation. That's what this sort of higher order function composition returns us. This outer product is also a unary operation because we're passing it to the W, w combinator. This is a unary operation and this is a unary operation. And when you have a sequence of unary operations effectively, four in a row, that does not lend itself to the train model of composition in array languages. So if we copy this and we'll, we'll add it back in a bit, in order to get this to parse correctly, what this thinks is it wants this to be a three train, but we don't want this to be a three train we, because you get the B combinator. This is basically you want three B combinators in a row. So one option is to just parenthesize every set of two unary operations. 
So this would work. However, this is very irritating, obviously, because a two train is the B combinator. So this then forms a unary function and you're applying once again, then the B combinator. However, this is really irritating. So my preferred method is to use nothing. Uh, I think it's this one here. So when you use nothing, it basically says, don't evaluate this as a three train, AKA the phi combinator, evaluate this as the two train. And if you do that a second time, we'll get what we want. And so this is the point free version of the first half of our solution. And then, like I said, we'll copy and paste this back. And now because we basically have a unary function here, if we parenthesize just this side and we partially apply this, we can get rid of this X and this is our point free version. So we have a fork or a phi combinator at the top level. This forms a unary function. This forms a unary function. And this is a binary function. However, that is, it's a lot going on there, and I'm not saying that this is bad. I just liked the explicit version better. Anyways, that out of the way, let's hop over to WeWaPad to solve this in WeWa now to compare this to the BQN point free solution. So first thing we need to do is to build up our identity matrix again, which we are going to do by calling table equal duplicate range len. You hit control enter. It automatically converts all of this to Unicode. And it seems like there is a small UI bug here when you hit control enter. It doesn't always bring you to the end of the line. Sometimes it moves your cursor around, but not a big deal. And this is the first half of our identity matrix. We now need to do the reversal and the max. And this is what I find really nice about this language is that whether you need a copy of your original matrix, or you need a copy of some temporary that you've calculated, you can always just insert these duplicates wherever you need them without ever needing parentheses, which is so incredibly beautiful. So here we definitely need a duplicate, and that's just gonna put an extra one of these on the stack. So now we need to call reverse, and then now we're gonna call max, and we're good to go. That is. So elegant, so beautiful. I've only been messing around with this language now for two days, but having this stack here and being able to copy what would be kind of like a temporary in an array language typically is so easy here and I absolutely love it. And once again, now that we have our identity matrix, previously in BQN, you had to do this parentheses, you know, one uh, max, and then you'd make a call to, to X here. But once again, we don't need to do that. We can just go to the beginning of our solution, copy the original matrix. Now that's on the stack. We're going to need to do a flip, AKA the C combinator to get that at the top of our stack. And now we can do our min one, which is just putting one on the stack, calling min, and we can just call match now and we're done. And just to prove, you know, that this is working, we can uncomment our second unit test. And this is absolutely brilliant. I cannot express how powerful it is and how beautiful it is to be able to copy values at any point in your expression just by using the duplicate, AKA the W combinator. So beautiful, absolutely love it. And in my opinion, WeWa definitely has the more beautiful solution compared to BQN. Like I said, here we're showing the explicit version. We looked at the point free version and the point-free version is actually one character less, but having to use nothing in order to compose repetitive B combinators is not ideal. Wiwa, brand new stack-oriented array language. Fantastic. You got to go check it out, folks. And also, too, the table. I love the glyph for the table. I actually, at one point, was messing around with creating my own Unicode array language, and I stumbled across the exact same Unicode character that I was going to use for outer product, AKA table is what it's called in WeWa and BQN. Love it, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Hope you're going to go check out WeWa and we will see you in the next video. Be sure to subscribe and leave a like if you like the video.